I'm gonna share with you the 10 keys to unlock what I call your quick brain. These are the 10 things scientifically proven to help you be faster, smarter, and better, to optimize your brain health and your fitness. Now, every single thing I'm gonna say, nobody's gonna debate. They're gonna say, yes, of course, but common sense is not common practice. So what I'm gonna ask people who are watching this is to rate yourself zero to 10. How well am I doing in this one area? like in terms of how I'm eating or exercising or something. And then you'll notice everyone wants to know what the magic pill is. There's no magic memory pill. There's there are magic memory processes, right? And everyone wants to know the one silver bullet. You have to do all of these things because that's what falls within the focal point, meaning that the 80-20 rule, the 20% that gives you 80% of the results and the rewards. So really fast, the 10 keys for unlocking your quick brain. Number one is good brain food, right? Good brain food because you are what you eat. What you eat matters, especially to your gray matter. There are certain foods that are really good for your brain. So there's 10 of them that I recommend. They're really excellent. They're very neuroprotective and such. So let's go through my top 10 really fast in no particular order. I'll say number one is avocados. This is your fatty fruit, right? Your good fat, your monosaturated fat that helps keep healthy blood flow. Number two, blueberries delicious. I, I call them brain berries. You protect your quick brain from oxidative stress, reduces the effects of brain aging conditions. I would say number three, I love broccoli. It's a great source of vitamin K, which is known to enhance cognitive function and improve brain power. It's also an, a remarkable source of fiber. Number four, coconut oil. These are medium chain fats. These ignite your body's fat burning furnace to turn on, uh, helps create ketones that fuel your brain. Number four, five, I would say eggs, memory improving choline, omega-3s, vitamin E. If you eat eggs, they're, they're good for you and for your brain. Number six, I would say green leafy vegetables. So important, right? Green leafy vegetables. This is your spinach, your kale, your collard greens. These are good sources of vitamin E and folate. Number seven, if it's good in your diet, I would say salmon. And I'm talking about the wild, deep water fish, rich in omega-3, essential fatty acids, DHA, uh, sardines are good too. Number eight is turmeric. Turmeric reduces inflammation, also helps boost antioxidant levels and keeps your immune system healthy while also improving your brain's oxygen intake. So keeping you alert and able to process information. Number nine is walnuts. These are high levels of antioxidants. Vitamin E protects your neurons. They ward off brain aging conditions, high levels of zinc and magnesium, which is really good for your mood. And being in a good mood is definitely good for your, your brain performance. And I saved the best for last. Number 10 is dark chocolate. I love dark chocolate. This is the most delicious brain booster. Helps with your focus, your concentration. It stimulates endorphins, which improves your mood again. And generally, when it comes to chocolate, I'm thinking the darker, the purer, the better for your brain. So a good brain diet is number one. So just rate yourself on a scale of zero to 10. How, how good is, uh, is your diet? All right, number two is killing ants. Automatic negative thoughts, your self-talk. And so what I would recommend to people, zero to 10, how does that feel? How, how well are you doing? And not only that, but maybe going on a, on a little fast or a cleanse, like, like, like we cleanse the, the food we eat and things we put in our body, but what about the thoughts? Again, you know, people, and people get so addicted to these things like complaining and whatever you're rehearsing, you're just, you're literally rewiring your brain to get more of that. It's not law of attraction. There's a law of action that's going on because all behavior is belief driven. And so you're wiring your brains to be really rehearsing those things. That's why they say a fearful person dies a thousand times, like a coward dies a thousand times in their mind. A brave person dies just once because every time you're rehearsing, oh, I'm scared of public speaking, you do it over and over again, not only do you get the fear of it every single time, because your imagination, your mind doesn't know the difference between something you vividly imagine and something that's real. Literally, if you were to put on a brain sensing device, the same parts of your brain that would light up if a dog walked in, you see what parts of your brain lights up, and if you imagine that dog walking in, the same exact parts of your brain will light up. So the mind doesn't know the difference. It's the most powerful tool you have is your imagination. Going back to the power of killing ants, our thoughts are things and it's improve, you know, activating our imagination. So don't do it to rehearse your fears and the things that are negative. Number three, I would say exercise, exercise. And this makes sense, but you have your brain primarily to control your body. And so as your body moves, your brain grooves. As your body moves, your brain grooves. When it comes to exercise, it's very, very clear. The research proves that 
when you move and you exercise, anything that's good for your heart is going to be good for your head. And so exercise is one of the best ways that you could actually feed your brain, the oxygen, the blood flow. And people who exercise are more physically active will do better on mental acuity tests, focus tests, memory tests, and so on. So move. Number four, brain nutrients. And this is a subject that comes up because a lot of people travel, they have fast food lifestyles, and maybe they're lacking in certain supplements. And what I would say is, you know, I'm not a nutritionist, but go to a doctor, a good functional medicine doctor, you have a blood test. And that, I, say, I say the same thing for diet. When people say, what's, what's the best? Do food sensitivity tests. See what your blood says, you know, red, yellow, green. Red, stay away from, yellow, you know, sparingly, green, and see how you flourish on it afterward and then test it. But same thing with nutrient profile. You can see what you're deficient at. Because if you're low on B vitamins, if you're low on DHA, then you're gonna have cognitive issues. Fifth thing that you want to optimize your brain is positive peer group. We know who you spend time with is who you become. Because, and it's not just a positive thinking, you know, affirmation quote. Literally, you have mirror neurons, and your mirror neurons in your nervous system is when you could watch a sport or watch a movie and you could feel what they feel, or you have empathy. We're always imitating people. And so who you spend time with is who you become because you're imitating their habits, their behaviors, their thought patterns, and everything. So that's why they say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you're around nine broke people, you're gonna be the 10th, right? Like you hear these things all the time. It's not just your biological networks or your neurological networks. Analyze your social networks. Because whether or not you smoke has less to do with your neurological networks and more to do whether or not your friends' friends smoke. Sixth thing for your brain, clean environment. We know a clean environment is good for your brain. At an anecdotal level, you know when you clean your desk or you clean your laptop off, you know you have clarity of thought, right? But I don't just mean that, I mean clean air, clean water, because there's a lot of pollutants that's not good for your cognition. So from there, we have number seven, sleep. This is a big one for so many people. Sleep is so important for your brain for three reasons. Number one, it's where you consolidate short to long-term memory. Number two, it's where you clean out the plaque that could lead to brain aging challenges. And that's what the latest research is saying in terms of leading to dementia and such. And then the third reason is because when you dream. And here's the thing, you're like, what does that have to do with anything, Jim? It's like, you don't know how many amazing ideas and invention, literature, works of art came in dream states. Paul McCartney came up with yesterday in his dream. A chemist came up with the periodic table in his dream. Elias Howe created the sewing machine in his dream. What are you dreaming about late at night? Because when you are working all day and you're learning all day, your brain doesn't shut off at night. At night, it's more active. People don't realize that. You think it's just not happening. It's actually more active and it's coming up with solutions and it's integrating stuff in the form of dreams. Number eight is brain protection. Meaning that I work with a lot of athletes, high performer athletes, concussions are a big deal. And I've had a number of TBIs, you know, traumatic brain injuries. But not just that, I did a whole episode on electromagnetic fields. People don't realize that our smart devices, like our brains didn't really evolve to have all this electricity right by our brains. And I read recently that 90% of kids sleep with their phones underneath their pillows. And then finally, nine and 10, ninth key to keeping your brain alive is new learnings. Neurogenesis and neuroplasticity means neurogenesis, you could create new brain cells the day you die. Science never thought that. Neuroplasticity is saying you could create new connections, meaning that Einstein's brain wasn't bigger than any of ours. In fact, it was, it was smaller, but parts of his brain were very highly connected because he would do these theta state brain thought experiments. Every single time you have a new thought, you may create new connections. And so the way to improve neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, two things, novelty and nutrition. Just like when you're an athlete, your body, you give it novelty or stimulus, and then you feed it with nutrition. And so that's how you build your mental muscles too. Finally, number 10, stress management. People don't realize it because it's invisible, but it's like, you don't realize how much stress you're under until you're on vacation or you're getting a massage. You don't realize because it's all there all the time. It's like the, the fish that they don't see the water because it's there all the time. So what are we doing to cope? The, you know, meditation, relaxation, massage, yoga, whatever it is that gets us stressed. So those are the 10 keys. Those are the 10 keys for unlocking your quick brain. And the thing is, when I go through that, notice you could do all that, but not sleep, you're not in good shape, right? Everyone wants to know the one thing. You could do all that, be deficient in B12, you could be in challenge. You could be with all that and be with energy vampires, and you know, it's gonna, it's gonna suck the mental energy out of you or wonder why you're just mental fog, brain fog, and you're, and you're losing it. Every single thing is important. And so my goal is genius leaves clues that it's not a mystery. We just have to do it. Just like going back to this, that, you know, first you create your habits and then your habits create you.